Hi everybody, it's Laura Coyle here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about making snowflakes in Illustrator on the iPad. Now, even if it's not winter time where you are, I think there's a lot to learn in this tutorial because we'll be working with the line segment tool, strokes, and editing inside of mirror and radial repeats. So let's check it out. The line segment tool is here underneath the shape tools. It draws straight lines and allows you to change the angle while you draw. And notice there's a little label here that tells you the length and the angle of the line that you're currently drawing. Let's go over to the properties panel and just notice that the selected line, let me get my selection tool and select this, has two fields here for the length. So we can lengthen from the center out using this slider here. And then we can also change the angle here. So you can do these things very precisely if you want to, after you've drawn your line segment. And the line segment tool can draw lines that snap to the grid. So let's go ahead and open up the precision panel. And under snapping, I already have smart guides turned on. Now I'm gonna turn on snap to grid. And I'll also turn on the grid. And here under spacing, you'll see subdivisions are set to four. I've changed this. So normally it's eight subdivisions and I just like it less cluttered. So I've put four in this field. And now when we draw with the line segment tool, you can see it just snaps to any of these grid intersections here. I'll delete that. And I'll zoom in a little bit and just draw one nice straight line here. This will be the spoke for our snowflake. I'm also going to just lower the stroke width a bit. That way, when I draw the branches that come off of this, I'll be able to see when they touch. If you have a really thick stroke here, it's harder to see when you hit that center spoke. With my line segment tool, I'll start here and just draw like this. And then if you sort of watch the spacing of these grid intersections here, you can make all these lines parallel. That one's not parallel. Let me go one more. There we go. So I've got three branches now, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the grid over in the precision menu and turn off snap to grid. So I still have my smart guides on, but this next part, I don't need the grid snapping. I'm gonna get my selection tool and select these three branches and we'll create a mirror repeat from this going down into the lower right here to this menu, the repeat menu, and I'll choose mirror. So we can see at the bottom and top, we have handles here that allow us to control the angle of the mirror. And then in the middle, there's a handle. Sometimes you have to zoom in to see it because it's blocked by the common actions bar. This is the mirror axis. So I'm just gonna move this so it's right over the center line of this spoke. And with my selection tool, if I just tap on the artboard to deselect, let's take a look at this mirror object. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this by tapping and dragging on the plus sign there. So this mirror repeat object is inside of a rectangle this dotted line bounding box. And so in its current state, we can rotate it, we can scale it, we can do those kind of transformations. But if we wanna get inside of here and edit the mirror, then we have to double tap on one of the objects and we can see the original object on the left is highlighted and I have access to the handles here so I can change you know, the center line, I can change the angle, et cetera. So you have two states here. One is just looking like a group and then the other is double tapping to edit inside of the mirror repeat. All right, I'll go ahead and delete this. And now we're gonna nest this mirror repeat inside of a radial repeat. So I'm selecting both the center spoke and the mirror repeat object. So I have two things selected. Then I'll go back down to that repeat menu and choose radial. Now this is really looking like a snowflake. Let me move this closer into the artboard here, scale this a little bit. So with our radial repeat, we have a few handles we can work with here. This one on the side, 
increases the number of copies or lowers the number of copies. This handle at the bottom allows you to hide and reveal copies. And this handle at the top of the circle allows you to reposition and rotate. And it's really fun to discover what effects you can create here. Underneath in the common actions bar, I can increase the stroke weight now or decrease it, however you want to work with this. And these corner handles scale the whole snowflake proportionally. Now let's talk about a preference here for scaling strokes and effects. So if I go back to the properties panel, let's look and see. Currently the stroke is 9.148 points. And if I lower the size of this, we can see the stroke scales down to 4.905 points. So currently I have scale strokes and effects turned on. Let's go up to the gear icon and go into app settings general and then here is that preference i'm going to turn this off to show you what this looks like close this panel and now when i scale up we can see we're maintaining that 4.905 points and when we scale down the point size is the same but it just looks a lot thicker on this smaller object so however you set that preference is up to you i just wanted to point that out and while we're talking about strokes, just notice over in the properties panel, we can choose a dotted stroke, solid stroke. We can change the width profile to something a little bit more interesting. We have a lot of options here. This is a fairly new feature. And then we can also, let me go ahead. I'm going to change this back to a uniform stroke. And then we also have rounded end caps or these blunt end caps. So more choices you can look at. So far, all of this has been fairly simple, but this is where it gets a little tricky. We're going to edit inside of the repeat objects. Because remember, we have a mirror repeat nested inside of this radial repeat. And as I said before, these repeat objects behave a little bit like groups in Illustrator. And in Illustrator on the iPad, we edit inside of groups by double tapping. So if I double tap on this top spoke here, now you can see there is the mirror repeat object. I just rotated it a little bit so you can see that. Let me just tap undo. And then we have the spoke right here. So I can select that as well and I can edit it. Now let's say I want to make it shorter. So if I double tap on that top anchor point, that puts me into direct selection, as we can see with that little label at the top. And right now, both anchor points are selected. They're both dark blue. I'll tap in an empty spot to deselect them. They both turn white. Then I'll tap on the top one. This is the one that I want to move. And now I can shorten it. I can lengthen it. I'll straighten it out. So I've just edited the center spoke. I'm going to tap on done on the direct selection label and I'm still inside here. So let me go ahead, tap on one of these branches. Now I'm getting to the mirror repeat. I can do these transformations like scaling while it's that rectangular dotted line bounding box. But if I want to get inside of this mirror repeat, I'm going to need to double tap on one of these branches. Now that branch is active. And so I can do the same thing, just double tap on one of those anchor points. I'm in direct selection. I'm going to tap off to deselect. They're both white. Then I'm going to tap on just one to select it. And now I can move it. We can see all of these top branches are changing within this mirror repeat inside of the radial repeat. So I'll just shorten that to make it a little different and then tap off of it. Done. All right. So that's a little bit of editing inside. Now the next thing that becomes a little tricky here is drawing inside, but let's try that. So I've got one tap selects the overall radial repeat. A double tap gets me inside and I can see the one object I have here. And this bounding box <laughs> looks a little strange, but there it is. I can actually rotate that spoke. 
Let me get a circle here. I'm going into my shape tools, grabbing the circle, and let's try and draw a circle here. So I'm inside of the radial repeat and I'm able to draw a circle over the spoke and it's repeating. Now just notice that what we're seeing here, there is a blue box surrounding the entire snowflake and then there is a tall blue rectangle surrounding a single unit of this repeat. So that's the circle, the spoke, and the branches inside the mirror repeat. Now I'll just tap away to deselect that. Then if I want to get inside the mirror, I have to double tap on one, and now we can see that dotted line. So I'm just trying to help you differentiate between the different selections inside of this radial repeat. Then once we tap away, we can continue with playing with the handles and the positioning and just see all the interesting variations that we can create. So I hope this video has been helpful, not only for drawing snowflakes, but really understanding how editing inside of repeat objects and even inside of groups in Illustrator on the iPad works. And then also of course, working with strokes and the scale strokes and effects preference. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. My name is Laura Coyle, and you can find more about me and my Illustrator courses on lauracoylecreative.com. Please subscribe to my channel so you'll know when my next Illustrator tutorial comes out.